Can you think of any situation where valuing someone else's opinion would be a healthy thing to do? <clears throat> yes, there's many, many situations. Uh, but only you can decide if that opinion that you're receiving is an authentic one and resonates with you, if it feels to you that within that opinion there's something that goes, hmm, let me see, you know, there's, there, there's a point there, you know, and we do this all the time. I mean, everything that I'm speaking is a, 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 could be considered an opinion, you know. So you may find some value in some of these things, and that is an opportunity to find uh, some value, a healthy value in somebody's opinion. The unhealthiness comes when somebody, uh, when you are being uh, criticized, or if you feel as though you're taking something personally, uh, or if somebody is criticizing your music, or the kind of clothes you're wearing, or the kind of foods you like, or the kind of political position you hold, or religious position, uh, people's opinions can be, they can have edges in them. And those edges are always, those any edges you, you feel in somebody's opinion is their fear. <laughs> it's it, when you, if you looked under it, under it all, you'd find that their, 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 the edges in their opinions are fear. And these, uh, uh, the, 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 it's, there's absolutely nothing wrong with having an opinion. What becomes uh, dangerous is when you cherish your opinions and you believe that your opinions are the correct ones, not only for you, but for everybody. This is a form of, of uh, non-confidence, because if a person is confident in their opinions, there's no need to have to convince anybody of anything. When you're absolutely confident in your, the things you like, the things you don't like, the, you you allow the others to have their opinion without it affecting you. You know, you, you, you can allow that, and it's not going to uh, dig you, unless, of course, your ego takes something personally. And even benign opinions that can be helpful can be perceived in the other as uh, um, uh, they could take it personally, you know. Uh, and we do that too. I, I can only even say that because I, I do that. You know, I can see when I'm doing that. And that's the only reason, that, that's the only way you can ever come to know somebody else. You have to know yourself. And knowing yourself requires taking the microscope off the world and pointing it in. And we've talked about that. But... Um, So when you're confronted with somebody's opinion, that opinion can range anywhere between something very simple, like I like red, to the whole world sucks and everybody's an idiot. That's a very, very firm opinion in some people. And there was a time in my life where I was in a situation with people who had that opinion. And I adopted it, and it brought intense suffering. So buyer beware. Uh, you know, you, when an opinion comes at you, you will know if you can find a space of, of presence, you'll know if it's a healthy opinion that you can gain from, or if it's somebody else's insecurities that they're inflicting on you but only you'll know that. So, how do you listen? It requires you to enter the state of presence. It requires you, when listening to somebody else, to give them your full attention, like your full attention, without waiting for them to stop talking so you can give them your opinion, without critiquing or criticizing them in your own mind, without correcting them in your own mind while they're speaking, without placating them 
by some reason that you feel you need to placate them for some kind of gain that you are looking for. So that requires a state of open listening. And that also in this state, what you are doing is you are accepting the other to have their perspective. You are allowing them and you are listening. Now, the only way to really ever be an effective conversationalist and actually have a meaningful uh, relationship with somebody, and this is, can be tricky to do, at some point you have to figure out how to see things through their perspective. You have to be able to listen and understand what they're saying and try to imagine how they must feel about their perspective. It doesn't mean that you need to agree with their perspective. It may be in complete opposition to your uh, MO, you know, but you will not be able to be a, an effective helper or teacher or learner or conversationalist unless you can see from the other person's perspective.